Hi there, my friend. It's Pastor Greg sharing a couple more thoughts today on transforming the world. This week, we're taking a look at the spiritual attribute of obedience. Uh, just a quick reminder, again, that uh, from, from a Christian standpoint, uh, obedience is hearing God's word and acting accordingly. Um, the Christian hears and trusts, submits, and surrenders to God and to his word. Uh, the Christian is to be transformed, not conformed to the world. And that happens through the power of the Holy Spirit and also through the, uh, through the Word of God. We read the Word of God, read something in there, we realize our life does not quite measure up to what God has said, and we make a choice to obey. There's a really cool story that comes to us from 2 Chronicles chapter 17. Um, fascinating story about King Jehoshaphat. I think you, I, I think you love this story. So let's touch on that in just a moment. We'll talk about obedience and King Jehoshaphat in just a moment. In the meantime, I'm Pastor Greg, and this is Transforming the World. So there's this really fascinating story that comes to us from Second uh, Chronicles chapter 17. It tells a story about a guy by the name of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, I know, cool name, right? Uh, Jehoshaphat was uh, one of the kings of Judah. Um, his dad was Asa. He was king of Judah as well. And um, according to the biblical text here, um, chapter 17 of Second Chronicles, it says that uh, Judah, or excuse me, uh, Jehoshaphat strengthened Judah to stand against any attack from Israel. That, that those were the neighbors to the north. He stationed troops in all the fortified towns of Judah, and he assigned additional garrisons to the land of Judah and to the towns of Ephraim that his father Asa had captured. Verse 3 says that the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he followed the example of his father's early years and did not worship the image of Baal. He sought his father's God and obeyed his commands instead of following the evil practices of the kingdom of Israel. So verse 4 is the key there. It says that Jehoshaphat um, tried to do his best to follow God and obey his commands. There's, there's the key verse. There's the key verse in all of this. And uh, I know all around him, especially to um, Judah's cousins in the northern tribe of is northern tribes of Israel um, that there there was a practice of becoming more like the world uh, and rejecting God's teachings but Jehoshaphat even though his cousins to the north um, resembled the world Jehoshaphat said no that's not going to happen here he studied God's word and made a choice to obey it and that's and that's important but what ends up happening is that Jehoshaphat recognizing how important God's word was in in um, in helping people become obedient to the word um, if they didn't understand it how could they obey it so Jehoshaphat actually sends teachers out throughout the land of Judah he sends uh, and Levitical priests along and they go out into the towns, you know, instead of instead of waiting for the people to come into Jerusalem to hear the word of God, he sent them out and they started roaming through the uh, through the countryside, teaching what the word of God had to say. And the next thing you know, you have a nation of Judah who has heard the word of God being proclaimed and uh, is helped to understand what the word of God teaches. And the nation becomes, for, for the most part, the, the nation becomes obedient to the teachings of God. What I love, what I love about this is verse 10 in this chapter. It says that the fear of the Lord fell over the surrounding kingdoms so that none of them wanted to declare war on Jehoshaphat. Even some of the Philistines brought him gifts and silver as tribute. And the Arabs brought 7,700 rams and 7,700 male goats. Was this because Jehoshaphat was a great king? Was it because Jehoshaphat uh, was as wise as Solomon? No. It was because Jehoshaphat obeyed the word of God and um, helped the rest of the people in Judah understand 
and obey the word of God. Now remember, remember what obedience is. Remember how I talked about that. Obedience is hearing God's words and acting accordingly. And I suggest to you today that uh, it is a let's 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 bring this down to the to the church. When a church actually hears the word of God proclaimed, and the folks obey it. Uh, I am convinced that the world stands up and takes notice. When the world looks at a church that uh, hears and obeys the word of God, um, that that church gains a reputation in the world. And I believe people take notice. I do. This is why Bible reading is so very important. This is why Bible teaching is so very important. Because how can a person obey if they don't first hear and um, they also need help understanding. So it's it's an interesting little lesson in the life of Jehoshaphat. I think it's pretty cool. You know, here's a guy that's just like, wow, look at this book. It's so cool. And then he goes out and starts telling everybody else. And they're like, wow, this is so cool. You know, people are reading it and, and they're starting to obey it. And, and the nations around them take stand up and take notice. Imagine the difference that a church could have in a community if it would just hear and then obey the word of God. So we'll talk some more about obedience tomorrow. Um, talk about Philip the deacon tomorrow on transforming the world. My name is pastor Greg and I'll talk to you then.